Water cooler talks. It's different. It's fun. It's short. Take a 15-minute break to listen to the talk around the virtual water cooler with CLBC's Strategic Initiative Advisors, Shelley DeCoste, Michelle Ghost, David Johnston, and regular guest Sherwin Strong. Get the community inclusion scoop on pop culture, current affairs, entertaining anecdotes, and more. Water cooler talks from 9 to 9.15 a.m. and every second Tuesday thereafter. Thanks for having me at the water cooler. Typically, I'd have a cigarette then if we're standing around the water cooler, but apparently can't do that anymore. Uh, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge that I'm calling in from the traditional territories of the Esquimalt and Songhees peoples here on uh, uh, Vancouver Island. You know, we work with um, Indigenous peoples living with disability in BC and across Canada. It's the seventh anniversary of Indigenous Disability Awareness Month. Our 30th anniversary as an organization is 30 years this year. Yeah, so we're across disability organizations. We'll work with any individual or family that has a need as it relates to their disability. And that could be applying for uh, CLBC services. Uh, it could be through the, the PSI program at CLBC, uh, you know, autism, FASD, developmental disabilities, all, all the areas there, mental health, you know, physical disabilities. So we work in the whole gamut. And we don't make any restrictions on any disability. As long as you're an individual that, that uh, is living with a disability or a family of a, of a person living with a disability and you need some help, we'll help you. And that could be filling out an application. It could be issues relating to poverty. You know, we have our registered disability savings plan program, which we know the disability tax credit costs money and there's no money available. Sometimes we look for resources for that as well. It could be housing, it could be employment, it could be education. The whole gamut and, and, and everyone that comes with us you know, their need is is a priority to us, right? And and sometimes, you know, from the outside world, people might look at that and say, well, that's not a very big priority, but we know for them it is. And it's something that they're dealing with, and we've got to give assistance to help that. For a community living in BC, sometimes it's hard to connect with the First Nations people when they become um, a client of community living BC. How do you think we can fix that? Right before COVID hit, you know, we saw a huge change and a huge mindset within CLBC. So of course they, they've created a, an indigenous portfolio within the community living BC. Um, they've hired Joanne Mills as the executive director. She has a team now that's working with her. So now we're seeing some forward movement. For the new self-advocates that are coming in, that how can we make them feel more comfortable? Make sure people know that they're, that they are welcome there. That, that we're here to work together and provide support and that respect uh, is going to be given and that the individuals and families are going to be listened to and that together we're going to have a plan to move forward to make sure that people have the opportunity to thrive. And it's not always easy to do. Sometimes people get frustrated and, and COVID puts pressure on this kind of stuff, but we all have to remember that we're here for the same goal and that's, you know, to support each other and, and, and have other people support us as well because the information and the knowledge that self-advocate brings, brings and their families bring to us um, is, uh, you know, indispensable. We can't operate without it because who better than them who live the life uh, to inform what other boards do you sit on then? Here we're, we're asked to sit on a lot of different advisory committees. Of course, I sit on the, the Indigenous Advisory Committee for CLBC, the Minister's RDSP Action Group here, the Minister's uh, Accessibility Leadership and COVID-19 Advisory Committee here. We sit on the, um, there's too many, I can't remember them all. <laughs> so yeah, so we have our, we're, we're, we're connected quite a bit in different areas because we know it's better to be at the table and to, to make sure that, that, you know, we can talk as a service, service provider about some of the systemic issues that we face, but more importantly, what our, our clients and our families tell us about the, the barriers they face. So hopefully advocate for some positive change, and we've seen that happen. The question I have is, CLBC provides services on reserve to other provinces. 
No, David, you know, and I've brought that up and I've brought that up to uh, human rights uh, bodies as well. Uh, CLBC uh, didn't always provide services within First Nations communities. That came in 2014. BC has always been more progressive than the rest of Canada. And I think the agreement that CLBC has with the federal government, with Indigenous Services Canada, should be mirrored across Canada. Why wouldn't it be? You know, and I think that uh, they can look at the, the direction of CLBC now and what they're doing with their Indigenous component now with Joanne and her team. Uh, you know, Nora, the work that Nora's done in the past, all that stuff is great information uh, and great uh, a great template for other provinces to follow. And we're going to push that forward as well. We're going to keep pushing that forward because that's something that's important. Uh, it shouldn't matter where you live in this country and what, you know, this, this invisible line, you should have access to services. You know, good services and comprehensive services. So, Neil, how many people work for you? Uh, when we're full, we have about 18. Um, that includes contractors and regular and part-time staff. Uh, COVID has not been good to us. It's been a little bit rough filling someone. We have a number of vacancies right now that we're advertising for, uh, but we're getting back up to up to uh, where we should be. Do you do you hire people with lived experience? Let's give uh, people living with disabilities an opportunity to thrive in British Columbia and across Canada. So besides the, your main job, have any interesting hobbies that you'd like to do? Well, you know, uh, Michelle, I, uh, there was a time when I collected uh, vintage G.I. Joes, you know, from the 1960s and 70s. And I and I, I don't really collect them anymore, but I have about 250 of them. Uh, yes. and, yeah. Uh, I played with them as a kid, you know, I'm, even though I'm only about 22 years old. <laughs> Um, I played with those older ones as a kid, and um, and then uh, you know growing up, I you bury them in the backyard, and I'd lose them, this kind of stuff. And then years later, when I moved to Victoria, I I wasn't really familiar with uh, eBay. I'd never bought anything on it. I was always kind of leery of it. So, anyways, I I happened. To, I said, well, I wonder if anybody has a GI Joe, and I actually looked down there, and there was one. So I bought one, and then from there, it just escalated. So I got this massive amount of GI Joes that uh, I'm gonna have to sell it. I got one question for you, for you all because I know yeah. Michael Prince. Like, do you think he's too tall? Because he's way taller than us. Kind of like... He's tall. I have an interview coming up with him, too. Yes, he's tall. He's tall. Uh, that's not right. <laughs> Anyways, thank all of you for having me on today. I think we learned something today from you. We learned a lot. I think I learned a lot from you, yeah.